Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com and in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about validating user input using Joy. So what we're going to do is validate the data coming in from this form. Now, the reason you would validate user input server side is because you can never trust the data that you're receiving from the user. So to get started, let's actually head over to Visual Studio Code. And I'm just going to cancel out our server and I'm going to type npm install joy. And this is going to install the joy module. Now from here, what we're going to do is actually require it into our application. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to type const joy is equal to require joy. So now that we have joy in our application, let's actually go down to our request. So we have our get request, which basically serves the form to our user. And we have our post request, which is going to get the data from our user. So from here, what we want to do is actually validate the data that we get within our request body. And in order to do that, what we're going to do is create a schema. So what's a schema? A schema is basically uh, a blueprint, a set of rules that we want our data to have. So we have an email field and we have a password field. So what I want to do is make sure that the email that the user gives me is a valid email. And likewise with the password field. So what we can do here is I could come down here and we can create a schema. Now remember, this is just a blueprint. I'm going to say joy dot object. Now this is going to give us a joy object. Next thing we need to do is call a method called keys. Now keys is going to work the same way that a regular JavaScript file would work. You will have your key value pairs and we're going to pass in the options. Now within here, what we want to do is set the rules that the data that we're receiving must follow. So we have a field called email and within here, I'm going to say joy. I'm going to say string. So what I'm saying is the email field must be a string value. I'm going to trim that data that I'm receiving. I'm going to call a method called email. And this is going to check to see whether or not this is a valid email. And I'm going to call one more method called required. Now required does is if the user sends me a null email, in other words, the user doesn't fill out an email. I'm going to get an error because this field is required. So let's go back to our another property. And the next property we have is password. So from here, I'm going to do the same thing. Joy. I need it to be of type string. And let's change it up for the password field. So let's say that I need the password to be at least five characters. So I'm going to call the min method. I'm going to pass in five. I'm going to call the max method and I'm going to pass in 10. So right now this password must be a minimum of five characters long and a maximum of 10 characters. So between five and 10 and the last method I'm going to call is required. And now let's end this with a semicolon. So now that we have our blueprint, let's actually use it. So we're going to call a method called validate. So I'm just going to say joy dot validate. And it's going to take three arguments. The first argument is the object that you want to validate. In this case, remember, we use the body parser to parse the form data and attach it to the body of the request object. So this is going to be our first argument. The second argument is going to be our blueprint, which we just created. It's called schema. And our third argument is going to be the callback function. It's going to take two parameters. First one's going to be error. Second one is going to be result. And what we can do is find out our results. So if I say if error, this is going to execute true if there's something wrong with the data. So if error is not null, then this code will be executed. So if error is executed, we know something went wrong. So I'm just going to say res.send and error 
has occurred. But if there is no error, what we can do is we could just say res.send and I can say successfully posted data. Now, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to print out result just so you can see what the result is. Now, the result is basically just going to be the data that we passed in. So it's just going to be the request body. And I'm going to go up here and I'm going to print out the error object. So now that I have these two out, what we can do is get rid of our old code from the last tutorial. I'm actually going to save this. We're going to type in node app. Let's head over to Chrome. And from here, I'm just going to type in, actually, let's just refresh the page real quick. Let's type in an email and let's type in a password. And then if I hit submit, you can see successfully posted data. So if I go back to Visual Studio Code, you can see that our email is right here and it probably hit submit twice because I probably clicked it twice. And you can see that our result that's getting printed out is just the request.body is whatever the user posted and you would do all your database manipulation and calls here. So now let's actually go back to Chrome. And this time we're going to type localhost again. Instead of giving valid data, let's see what happens when we post invalid data. So I'm going to post valid data for email. And for the password, remember, we have to give it between five and 10 characters long. So I'm just going to give it two characters long and let's see what happens. I'm going to hit submit. And you can see the response we get an error has occurred. So let's actually take a look at this in Visual Studio Code. You can see this big, long mess of mumble jumbo. So I'm just going to go back up. And you can see the error that we're getting. It says validation error child password fails because password must be at least five characters long. So you can see our validation is working and this is pretty much the ins and outs of validating user input using joy.